So Devlin Duck Hodges had his first career NFL start on Sunday Night Football, and he picked up a win along with it. He's now the third starter that Pittsburgh has thrown out there, and it wasn't exactly a dominating start by any means. I mean, he went 15 for 20 with just 132 passing yards, but he also had a touchdown and just one interception. And one key thing worth mentioning is that basically all of his passes went to James Conner, it seemed like. I mean, James Conner had 7 of his 15 receptions, and also he had 78 of the total 132 passing yards. So just under half of the receptions were by James Conner, and over half of the total passing yards were to James Conner. So clearly, the mindset was, get the ball to James Conner, and they definitely did that. And So let's just start breaking down some plays from how he got the ball to James Conner. Like, one play was a play like this, where it's going to be a cover three zone, and so there's going to be four chargers who are in the middle of the field, and Connor's route is that one, which you might think, okay, this isn't really necessarily great against zone coverage. Now, because there are so many defenders who will be in the area, there's a very small chance this one goes for a first down even, but they're still going to try to throw it to Connor here, and here's why. Watch how Hodges quickly gets the ball to Connor, and then Connor's actually able to make a move, get around a charger, and then he's able to pick up four yards or so. So that's far from a spectacular play by any means, but you know what? Now it sets up a third down and four situation where you can do something like this. What Pittsburgh is going to do is they're going to send a receiver right over there out to essentially just get in the way of that charger who's on the top half of the screen, and then they'll send Connor up to the top half of the screen to potentially get open and try to get this first down since it is now a third down and four. This play can work, which is why they had another play earlier that was just designed to get a few yards, not necessarily to get a ton of yards. They're playing very methodically here. They just want to get the first down because that puts them in pretty automatic field goal range and gives them a good chance to, at nothing else, get a field goal. And after the ball is snapped, the receiver does a good job of getting in the way of a defender, and now this means that Hodges has a straight shot to try to make this throw towards Connor. So this seems like it's pretty easy, and it's definitely far from a difficult throw, however, it's not necessarily the easiest thing in the world, it's kind of a little bit more, it looks a little bit easier than it actually is, and the reason for that is because if Hodges misses the throw in any direction, this can create some trouble. Barring an absolutely terrible throw, it's almost definitely going to be a completion, but if he kind of misses this throw in any direction, it could create some problems for Connor. Ideally, you want to just hit Connor right in his chest, where he can then just run wherever he wants, but sometimes it's not so easy to do. However, Hodges is going to make a perfect throw that allows Connor to make the catch and continue running and pick up the first down, so good play from Hodges. Again, not the biggest degree of difficulty that play had, but it was still a good job by him. And honestly, that's the way that this Steelers team is using Hodges. They're definitely having the mindset of, let's not try to get this guy to make too many big plays. Let's let him rely on James Conner, rely on the offensive line, rely on Juju Smith-Schuster. Let's just have him do some small things. They're not expecting him to do much, and for good reason. I would be shocked if Hodges throws for over 300 yards in a single game. I would be very surprised by that, because that's not what they're expecting him to do. They're expecting him to be a game manager, that's what they want, and you know what, if he can be a game manager, they can potentially win some games. I mean, keep in mind, you have no reason to lose, because you don't have a first round pick, so unless you're trying to get your second round pick to be as high as possible, typically I wouldn't really care about that, I'd just be trying to win. And honestly, they can potentially win some games with Hodges at quarterback, they absolutely could. I don't know how long it'll be until Rudolph is back, but you know, typically the mindset is a good backup quarterback can go 2-2 two and two in a four game stretch until your starter comes in. But in this situation, maybe they need their third string quarterback to go 2-2 two and two until they decide that Mason Rudolph can come back in, who knows. There are definitely some disadvantages to just relying on your quarterback to be a game manager, like on a play like this for example. It's once again cover four zone, and once again, Pittsburgh, they're just trying to do something small here since it is a third down and four situation. What they're going to do is have their tight end and receiver on the bottom half of the screen run those two routes right there. And then they'll send Connor out to the bottom half of the screen. Hodges hits Connor. Hopefully they can pick up the first down. You know, Connor's having a very good game. Maybe he can just pick up four yards. They get the first down that way. So they're essentially taking the ball out of Duck's hands on this one. And so if you notice what happens, you know, it's a quick throw to Connor. Connor's able to actually get around a couple of tackles and get just enough for the first down. So that play actually did work out, but there's a lot up to chance on that one. You're kind of relying on Connor to be able to get around those tackles. So maybe I shouldn't say it's just straight up a bad thing because it isn't. However, you're definitely leaving a lot up to chance when you do something like that. And you could argue that it's James Conner making a great play, you have a good player in James Conner, he will make good plays. But at the same time, it also just wasn't the best tackling from the Chargers. So, 
perhaps if they go up against a better tackling team, those plays wouldn't really work out the way they were able to work out on Sunday night. It also should be mentioned that just with being a run-first team, you know, they only threw the ball 20 times and they ran the ball 36 times, that definitely set up the play action. And while James Conner didn't really have too much of a great game rushing-wise, he only averaged 2.6 yards per carry, which was 41 yards on 16 carries, Benny Snell Jr. actually had 75 yards on 17 carries, so they still found a way to get some solid rushing gains. And so with a team that's running the ball a lot and having some success running the ball, this now creates some problems for the Chargers. Like, if we take a look at this play, what's going to happen is it's going to be play action, and then Pittsburgh is going to have that receiver just run that route over the middle, tries to get open, and since it is play action, hopefully the linebackers will move in to potentially clog up a run, and then he could be more open. And after this ball is snapped, as you see, it's working out. I mean, the linebacker is definitely prepared for a potential run, and the receiver behind him, Juju Smith-Schuster, is absolutely going to be open. So now for Hodges, easy throw. I mean, he's just able to make it. That's not a hard throw to make whatsoever. Even if you miss it, it's still probably going for five or seven yards. I would actually say he hesitated a little bit on that one, which allowed Chargers players to come over and make the tackle short of the first down. I think if he hits Smith Schuster in stride and hits him at a perfect time, then it goes for a first down. So I would say that that was actually not a perfect play, but again, you're making things easy on your young quarterback, your young third string quarterback, which is what you have to do if you are the Steelers. And I mean, hey, they were able to get a win with their third string quarterback against a team that I thought was going to be good this year. I think many of us thought was going to be good this year in the Chargers, although it's been kind of depressing so far. But from the Steelers perspective, they're just doing a good job of making things easy on their young quarterback. There was also this play where the way it's going to work is that it's going to be play action to the bottom half of the screen, but then Dodges will just run up to the top half of the screen, and then you'll have those receivers running those routes right there. So everything's going to the top half of the screen. And after this ball is snapped, at first, you know, things work out okay. He has plenty of time to make a throw, which is the whole point of doing something like this. However, not really much is going to be open. Obviously, it's hard to see right now. I don't have the All-22 footage on Monday. All-22 footage videos come out on Tuesday on this channel, but for now, there's... Take my word for it, nothing was open, so he kind of has some decisions he has to make. One thing he could do was just throw the ball away. I mean, that is something that is on the table here. However, if you can gain some yards, gain some yards, and so that's kind of what he's going to do. He runs forward to try to pick up a couple yards, however, he then takes a big hit, which is not really what you want, especially when you're, you're already the third string quarterback. You don't want to have to go down to a fourth string quarterback. So I would say good on him for trying to gain some yards, but maybe slide and or even just throw the ball away, you know, two yards isn't the end of the world, but... At the same time, you can't really fault the guy for trying to make a play when, for all he knows, this might be his only chance to really make a name for himself in the NFL. So that's something that I normally advise against for quarterbacks, especially young quarterbacks, but at the same time, I kind of understand it in this situation. You do kind of have to make a name for yourself. And it also didn't look like he was trying to, to take a hit. I think he just kind of got a little bit confused, took a little bit too long to make a decision, and then got hit pretty hard. So, again, and those things matter too, not just in the sense of you could get injured, but that just makes it more difficult on your next play. I mean, think about taking a hard hit, but then 30 seconds later, getting up and making another play. I mean, that's it's not so easy to do. One more play that I honestly didn't love was this one, where this is a key situation. There's a minute and 16 seconds left. The Chargers just have one timeout left, and it's a seven-point game. The situation is pretty clear. If Pittsburgh gets the first down here, then they win. If they don't get the first down here, then the Chargers get a shot to tie the game. So Pittsburgh has an interesting play call here where they're actually going to just fake as though it's going to be run through the top half of the screen, but instead, Dodgers is going to keep it himself and run out to the bottom half of the screen. That's the way this is going to work. And so for the Chargers, the actual key guy to watch is going to be that edge rusher, because if he reads that this is actually going to be a quarterback run, then he should also run out to the bottom half of the screen to make sure that he's aware of that quarterback who's running with the football. However, he completely bites on this play action. He totally thinks that it was going to be a run. And now, I mean, this is just a great situation if you're a quarterback. I mean, this is what you want. This is how you draw this play up. You have space, and the first down marker is right there. So there actually is, again, this would be easier to show if there was all 22 footage. There is a charger who's past the first down marker, but watch what Dodgers is going to do here. He tries to cut through the bottom half of the screen, which is just a mistake, and they aren't able to get the first down here. Granted, it didn't matter. The Steelers still won the game, largely due to a pretty good punt, but I still don't love that play. I think you just run straight forward and try to get the first down that way. I generally don't see any way you don't get the first down if you do that. You might take a big hit, but at the same time, 
Clearly, you're okay with taking a big hit if you're okay with running this type of play. I know I said I didn't love the hit earlier, but the reason for that was because it was a hit just to gain two yards in a meaningless situation, essentially. This would be a hit to win the football game. That's an okay hit to take. That's a hit that Tom Brady would take. I mean, these are the situations where it's okay to maybe take a hit. The goal on a quarterback isn't to never take a hit. It's just to minimize those and only take it when it's absolutely necessary. And this was pretty necessary. I just didn't love it. I thought that he could have more intelligently ran for the first down. Again, he's a quarterback. His job isn't to intelligently run for first downs, but that's just my opinion. I think it's a small thing, but it was just something that I felt like wasn't the best play from him. So yeah, that's the thought of his performance. I find the Steelers team interesting. I mean, one lucky thing for them is that on Monday Night Football next week, they play the Dolphins, which should be a good situation. And with the Ravens playing the Seahawks in Seattle next week, I mean, it seems more likely than not, actually, that we could very easily be looking at a Pittsburgh Steelers team that is actually just one game out of the playoffs after Week 7. And in fact, it seems more likely than not that that will happen. But I also do feel like if they're going to have any real shot, they are going to have to push the ball downfield a little bit more. I know you don't have a ton of faith in your quarterback, but... The reality is, I don't think you can win in the NFL with your halfback getting more than half of the receiving yards. I just don't think that can happen. But hey, who knows? I got them a win this week. So that's all you have to do is win that week and then focus on winning this next week. So we'll see what happens. And as always, thanks for watching.